Welcome back, Michael here again with another RenderMan uh, tutorial, this time featuring quite a bit of ZBrush where we're going to be modeling a stylized cloud and then we're going to take it into Maya and we're going to render it up with the ZBrush to make it look like a stylized cloud. Um, so let's get started, straight diving straight in uh, to ZBrush. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Spotlight by hitting the comma button. Uh, then I'm going to go to Tool, and then I'm just going to grab the Polysphere um, Z Tool. And I'm just going to close the um, Spotlight uh, just with Comma again, and I'm going to lift click and drag out the sphere, uh, and holding Shift to keep it upright, and then I'm going to click T, um, which is going to bring it into the uh, editing mode. Um, I'm just going to bring uh, hit Shift F to bring up the um, polyframe, uh, and then let's go to geometry and let's go to the lower subdivision and delete higher because I don't need that high poly yet. Uh, so basically the best way to do this is if you do a little doodle of what you want the silhouette of your cloud to look like to start with. I've already done one. I'll show you a picture of it here on a piece of paper that was just sitting on my desk. Um, this will make it a lot easier for you to figure out what it should look like as you work. If you don't have a reference to work off, you're just going to be making up, uh, making it up every time you make something new happen. So it's not going to end up looking very cohesive in the end. So it's important to have a reference sketch or a reference image to work off. Um, all right, so I'm just going to hit W for the transpose tool uh, for move. And if I hold down control, I can uh, move out a new um, sphere out of that one and I'm going to hit control W each time I do this because it's going to give me a new um, poly group on the previous one so I can hit control and click and um, that will isolate it and um, mask out the other one so I can change the size of this by hitting E for scale and then scaling it down um, scale it up just a touch just a touch all right and uh, then we're going to hold down control uh, with the move tool again and we're going to move them across uh, and then I'm going to invert the selection. Did that invert? Yeah. Um, so by cl uh, clicking control and clicking on the background and then hit control W again so we get another poly group there. Uh, and then we're going to scale this one down as well. And remember that we're going to be working in three dimensions, so it does help to check all of your planes. Uh, I'm going to keep this fairly symmetrical to start off with, and then, um, and then once we start getting into it, um, I'll move some things around and add some uh, some spheres in the front here as well. Uh, so this is looking pretty good. So I'm going to just use the clip curve uh, brush now. By hitting Control and Shift, uh, I've selected it on the bottom there. I've got mine under the thing, but if you hit B, uh, it's there under C, I think. Um, and then hit Control and Shift and slice about there. So what I'm looking to do is create uh, a point where the sphere, the bigger one, sort of comes down inside again. Not it's not just a it's not just the center up. It actually comes over itself. Um, and then I'm going to hit B and then I and then uh, insert sphere and we're going to put one here we're going to put one there and this is all very rough we're not worried about making it perfect um, and then I'm going to make one more there so thinking about this silhouette, I'm just going to clear that mask and um, actually I should make that sure that perspective is off, that helps. Um, thinking about this silhouette, you'll see that I've got five spheres essentially and um, a good design tip is to make sure that your, your, um, uh, your silhouette has got an uneven amount of like repetitive shape so this repetitive shape will be a, a circle or a sphere um, so I've got five circle shapes at the moment which is more interesting to look at if you're a human being if you're not a human being then why are you watching this um, but 
people are attracted to um to non-repetitive uh like um patterns so and, and you see this in nature as well nothing is going to be perfect like um perfect even like if you see a bunch of trees that are going to be perfectly spaced out unless someone's planted them that way um so we want something non-repetitive looking um so that's getting close to how i want it to look i'm just going to actually add uh with the insert sphere still selected or add one of these guys sort of here and clear that clear the mask again and oh, and add in another one here i'm just going to push him back a little bit the good thing about using the insert um, brush is that um, it creates a new poly group for your sphere so you can do that instead of copying as well um, i was just doing that to start off with oh and I clear that mask and chop that again no, I don't like that one so which is why it's good no it's actually use the same poly group as that one I'll just mask that yeah that looks sort of how I want it to look sort of a bit deeper than I was hoping but um I don't want to spend too long doing this so I'm just gonna do a bit of this action I'd sort of prefer to taper it, um, so I might just, I'm not stoked that that's actually the same poly group, so I'm actually going to quickly delete this front one here and reinsert this one. Okay, so that's basically the shape I want. So have a look at your um, cloud uh, from all the angles. And also while you're model modeling it, consider like how big you want it to be. Is it going to be like this far away in the distance and sort of you're going to be looking at it from this angle? Does it look good? Does it look good from this angle like this? Are you going to see it from the back? Because maybe you want the back to look a little bit different so you can actually copy paste it and then just flip it in your Maya scene so you can um, save a little bit of time. But that's basically what I want. Um, I'm going to get sort of a nice silhouette there. Um, I'm going to get some nice highlights on some of these top parts. It's not a perfect cloud. Sorry, this isn't the perfect example, but I'm just sort of doing this on the fly so we can get it done. I'm just going to even up the bottom there with the clip curve one more time. Cool. Uh, so what we're going to do is these are all separate um, parts. Uh, so as you can see you can shift click them and they'll be separated so I'm going to dynamesh them all together uh, and then Z remesh it so let's just figure out how much dynameshing we want to do um, that's a little bit low poly actually what I'm going to do is click dynamic subdivision uh, and apply that delete lower uh, and then dynamesh again so it's a bit smoother it's 256 maybe yeah that's probably good enough so uh, 200,000 polys is way too high to put into Maya um, for a cloud. So uh, let's see remesh it. Um, and let's just put it at 5k uh, with a dapped on. All right, there we go. So um, 6,000 poly. Um, that's pretty good. Uh, let's use dynamic because I'm going to be using uh, Cable Clark smoothing in Maya. So let's hit dynamic, see what that looks like. Yep, that's pretty good for what we're going to be doing. Um, looks like a nice blobby cloud. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just go up to uh, tool and we're just going to make sure our one sub tool is selected and we're going to click export. And then we're going to go into my Maya folder and we're just going to call this um, LP underscore cloud for low poly cloud. And then let's jump into Maya. Okay, so here we are in Maya with a fresh scene open. Um, I'm just gonna drag my LP cloud into the scene. Um, in case you didn't know you could do that just from um, Windows Explorer. And then we're gonna select it and we're gonna hit three to subdivide it. And we can see that that looks cool. Let's get rid of the grid because we don't need it. Um, all right, so let's start off by applying um, a Pixar Disney shader to it. 
we can change the base color to be pretty gray. Um, I'm going to make it a little bit yellow as well, just a touch. All right, um, then specular can be turned pretty much off. Let's give it 0 0.01. Yeah, um, roughness, we'll turn that up a touch. And then let's get an envir. Actually, let's use this guy here. Um, this is the um, environment day light um, shader. So if you change it to Heliodon, and then we can change the time to be 1600, which is 4 p.m., um, which will give us a backlit. Um, and we're actually going to put another light in the scene as well. And turn this guy around. And move him back. So it looks kind of cool. And we'll make this light just a little bit yellow as well. All right. And just so I can see what I'm rendering, turn the um, thing on. Noise, uh, the, the gate. Uh, and then with that all composed there, we'll click um, IPR and have a look at the render. Okay, so um, a little bit of work can be done to this. The light's a little bit hot there, but we're getting, it, it's hitting all the, the parts of this cloud that I want it to. I'm gonna pull the camera down so we can see the under, uh, underside a little bit more. And I'm gonna change that um, daylight thing because it's not quite doing it for me. Um, it could probably be a little bit earlier in the day. Actually, let's make it a whole lot simpler. Let's get rid of that. Let's put a standard environment light on it. Let's stop the render from rendering. Um, and let's change the procedural color to be a sky blue. And make it fairly blue. All right. Uh, and then let's have a look at that render again. Cool. So it's starting to look like a cloud. So you notice that I didn't use any sort of volume shader or anything like that, um, as you might have been expecting me to. Um, we can actually use a volume shader if you want to, but if you're making a stylized cloud, it's not 100% necessary to try and simulate um, an actual cloud that is made up of water um, because it's just going to sit there in the sky looking like a cartoon. And remember, like I said, where, where your camera is in relation to it is important as to how you're choosing to render it. Because if it's just this cartoony cloud a thousand miles away, it doesn't really matter if you do some like amazing simulations as to its like physical composition. That just sort of looks like a cloud um, in the sky in the distance. And we could actually probably make that material uh, a little bit um, lighter to to for it to be picked up in the sky in the distance. But um, we could actually even apply some emissions. So even in that Pixar Disney shader, um, I want the property editor to be in this. <sighs> I don't know why it doesn't want to stay the same color that it normally is. So there, and we're just going to give it some slight emission. So with some emission, um, it's going to stay brighter in the sky and not cut and not have so much self -shad shading. So if you compare that to that one there, it's a lot brighter. So that's a, a good little technique. If you've got it in the distance and it's not really getting enough light or if you just want it to be self illuminating you could hide that light um, and then bring that up and it's still gonna you know even though it's only got the environment light on it it's still gonna have some um, some illumination to it uh, but what about using a volume shader well that's pretty simple as well so um, with the hypershade editor uh, let's go to RIS and then let's make a um, pixel volume it's just uh, under materials there so we'll create that and then we're going to select our um, cloud and then we're going to right click on that and hold and then let go on assign material to selection is that actually yeah cool and then we're going to get some volume cloud happening um, and we'll just have a click uh, we'll bring that light back up actually because we won't be able to see it otherwise I uh, just bring up the outliner and uh, this shift H to bring it up. All right, let's render that. So you get a soft sort of little cloud thing happening. Um, this could be what you're after. Uh, I generally wouldn't use this for a stylized cloud. 
Uh, it's a little bit on the soft side, and I could probably pull this light to six again, um, and even more yellow. Um, so we can see it a bit better, because, yeah, so there you go. Um, that could be what you're after, but the problem is, for me, um, that you get a really defined edge, and it could be what you're after with your particular scene, but... Uh, for me, generally, I'd prefer to have like a, a more softer edge, sort of um, like a gradient out or to be a little bit uneven. Uh, and because you can't use something like Slim to add it, like a progressive shader to it, like a brownie or something like that. And if you can add a brownie into it, it I, should, I certainly haven't been able to figure it out. Um, but yeah, um, you're always going to end up with a uniform shading um, volume to it. So, I mean, that's still, it doesn't look the worst. I mean, it's not a bad looking cloud. If you, if you render it, it's, it's not 100% horrible or anything like that. And if you used it like this, uh, I certainly wouldn't blame you. Uh, there are a couple other things you can do to affect the way it looks with the volume shader. Uh, so just back in the Hypershade editor. Uh, the diffuse color, obviously, you can change the color of it. Um, you can give it self-emitting as well. So if you were unhappy with how it's being lit, um, you could just have an emit to it and then we'll render that and I'll show you the difference It's going to be a bit brighter. So if you've got a if you've got one far away um, And you don't want to put lights on it. That could be a solution for you um, Also, you can obviously change the emit color and that's actually starting to look pretty cool if I do say so um, But you're gonna to have to be wary of that silhouette. So we're getting that that one there which because it's sort of semi translucent uh, you're getting some of the out, uh, the far side spheres showing through, so maybe not exactly what you're after, but um, if you made one that was just one sort of row of spheres, that could be kind of cool. Um, and the only other thing that is probably worth mentioning is uh, the density float is going to control how dense it is. Um, you might just want to keep that at 1.0 and affect things with like the emit color or uh, the diffuse color. Um, otherwise, uh, you can also use multi-scatter, which means that the light is going to bounce off particles inside and hit other particles inside. This is going to increase your render time dramatically, however. Uh, if I show you the render now, um, it does make it a lot more obvious, though. Um, and a little bit noisy, to be honest. So it's something like you'd want to go into final renders for this to check whether or not it's going to look like what you want it to look like. Um, and you're definitely going to have to play with your light positioning as well. I think with this particular one, the light's probably a little bit close and it could probably do to like silhouette it a bit further in the background. Um, sort of like maybe that far away. Sort of see what that renders like. Yeah, so you're getting a lot more of like that silhouette happening. But in this case, you might just want to use the um, emit instead of using a light on it. And if you're going to do that, then you may as well not use self-scatter. So um, hopefully this has helped you um, design some clouds for starters and then um, some hopefully some useful ideas for creating clouds in your scene. If you're doing a cartoon style animation or, or still um, and you want to just... Uh, plop some clouds in the background. This is a really quick and easy way to design them um, and then get them into your scene. So uh, yeah, this pretty much concludes the stylized cloud tutorial. Uh, next week we're going to be looking at um, more like distant cloud scenes uh, like I showed in the Island Man um, render that I've done in one of my previous tutorials. I'll bring that up here in the video um, and a couple of techniques that can be used to light those scenes um, but yeah that's pretty straightforward as well so if you liked this video look out for that one if you're not subscribed you should subscribe because then you'll get that in your youtube feed next week when it's available um, and if you've got any questions please leave them in the comments i'd be happy to answer them um, and if you have any requests for tutorials for render man after next week clouds are going to be done so i'm going to need something else to um, do a tutorial for so uh, let me know what you're after and I can possibly help you out uh, but yeah until then happy rendering and thanks for watching mm -hmm.